Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Good morning, I'm D.G. Martin and I'm visiting here in Weaverville, a small mountain town just north of Asheville. From what I hear, a lot of people in town come to the Wellbred Cafe every morning to get a cup of coffee, great pastries, and just to catch up on what's going on in town. Let's go in and meet the owners. Reuben and Judy Clicken once owned a large wholesale bakery in New York. But tired of the hustle and bustle, they decided to move to North Carolina. Before long, they fell in love with Weaverville. Uh, we saw a beautiful home in the town and the mountains here. Uh, just attracted us to this little town. and uh, We were very lucky to discover it. Well, I want you to talk a little bit about the business of the bakery. Uh, this is an incredible display of pastries. And I would walk in and think, gosh, uh, must be a big truck that brings this in every morning. <laughs> Far from it, no. How does it work? It was made in that 300 square foot space in the back from scratch by very talented, incredible people. And we've got some really, really talented, talented dedicated people back there who are just amazing. They love what they do. Yeah, they love what they do. And it shows, you know, it shows. After a delightful pastry at Wellbread, I met Mayor Allen Root on Main Street. Well, Mayor Root, uh, Weaver Hill's got a beautiful Main Street now. Thank you very much. But it wasn't all that, always that way, was it? Oddly enough, no. Back in the early 1900s, this actually was an old plank road. But the town realized, times were changing, we need to get a paved road. But unfortunately, though, when they looked at the town budget, they realized we couldn't afford to get it paved. But somebody had a great idea. They realized if no town was here, the county would actually come in and pave the road. So then the old town of Weaversville went off the map. There was no more town here. The county came in, paved the road for us, and once they were done in 1909, the town then called Weaverville was formed, and that's where we've been ever since. Just a few miles from Weaverville is the birthplace of one of North Carolina's most colorful citizens, Zeb Vance. He was born here in 1830. He was a fast starter, already a member of the U.S. House in his 30s, and his exploits during the Civil War propelled him to governor from 1862 to 1865. After the war, Vance became governor a second time and worked hard to rebuild the war-damaged state. After his second term ended, Vance became a U.S. Senator. When you come to Weaverville, be sure to visit this historic site. It's a great tribute to Zebulon Vance, to all he did for North Carolina. Weaverville has many beautiful churches. In fact, the first church, a Presbyterian one, was built in 1791, just four years after the first Weavers arrived. But a few years later, the Weavers heard a Methodist preacher, and they got so caught up in the spirit that they became Methodist. The windows of the Weaverville United Methodist Church tell a fascinating story. Well, we're blessed every Sunday to worship in a beautiful sanctuary with beautiful stained glass windows, but there's one notable window here in our church, and it's called the Good Shepherd window. It was given uh, in memory of Charles Moore, a church member in 1920 by his wife, and for many years it was rumored that it was a Tiffany stained glass window. That was not determined conclusively until in the 1970s, and my understanding is that was based upon the robes you see on Jesus there in the Good Shepherd window. It's a vibrant red with uh, very detailed creases and ripples, and that's unique uh, to Tiffany, and so that determined, they determined from that that this was indeed a Tiffany window. Well, it is an incredibly beautiful window. Thank you for sharing that story. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. I love small town museums. You always find something interesting to see. And I'm here to meet Sally Smith, who is the unofficial historian of Weaverville. And she tells me she's got somebody very interesting for me to meet. The first Western family to settle in this area was the Weavers. Does your Weaver name have anything to do with the town? 
It does. The town's named for our family. John Weaver was the first uh, person coming to Western North Carolina in 1787, and one of his sons, Montreville Weaver, was the person from whom the town's named. Well, now I've heard about this tribe of Jacob. Where, where do you come out of that? I do, and that was his oldest son, and that's the one for whom the tribe of Jacob uh, reunion started, or with whom it started. And it started in 1859. And DJ, here's a picture of the reunion. Isn't oh, this wow. wonderful? That is great. That was from 1896. You're not in that picture. <laughs> no, that's a little more before my time. The tribe of Jacob and the descendants of Montreville Weaver continue their traditions of yearly reunions to this day. The Weaverville trolley brought hundreds of tourists to town. I wanted to show you where our depot was. It was a trolley line that ran from Asheville to downtown Weaverville. When did it operate? Mr. Holland built it about 1911, and it was about a 45 minute ride from Asheville, and it cost 35 cents one way. Oh well, that'd be nice today. It really opened up Weaverville to tourism, and it was a great thing for the local people to get into Asheville. But it was Weaverville College that really made the town grow. Now the Sons of Temperance built a school in about 1850s, and after it burned, the community decided that they needed a school, and actually the community got together to build the buildings for the college. Even some of the Cherokee Indian boys were educated here. In the early 1900s, the Methodist Church got behind the college, and it really took off. As a matter of fact, it was the leading co-ed school in Western North Carolina. Well, Sally, what happened to the college? Weaverville College combined with two other schools and it became the Brevard College. And at that time, they closed the campus here. You know, I know many friends whose parents were educated at Weaver College, and it really had a great impact on our community. Well, well, I'd like to stay here and visit longer, but we've got to go to an art safari. Oh, great. For a small town, Weaverville has a large artistic community. In fact, they have an art safari, and tonight is opening night. Let's go check it out. Our safari was actually originally uh, the brainchild of the bed and breakfasts of Weaverville. Um, they wanted to bring awareness to the fact that there were so many artists and craftsmen that lived in the Weaverville area, and uh, they wanted to take advantage of that to create a little tourism, which Weaverville didn't really have at that time. And we're getting ready to go on our 10th year, and it uh, has really done a tremendous amount, more so than any other single thing, to help brand Weaverville as an arts and crafts destination. When you're in Weaverville, be sure and visit all the great locally owned shops, galleries, and businesses. This is the site of the Reams Creek Wool Mill. Back in the old days, the farmers used to bring their wool here to be processed into fabric. Later it became a grain mill, and today it's a popular restaurant owned by, of all people, Sally Smith. Well, I've worked up a big appetite exploring Weaverville today, and I'm gonna have dinner. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.